G'day, Warbles on a lot here, and we're going to talk about uh, origami, aerophysics, and aerodynamics. We're going to begin by constructing a thing called a water bomb glider. It's called a water bomb glider because you commence construction as if you were going to build a water bomb. And once upon a time, when this was being designed, pretty much all kids knew how to build a water bomb. Now, probably because this design came out of a classroom, and we were impressed with it in the classroom because it had a long flight time, we didn't notice that it has a very, very low airspeed, and its flight times are pretty much a function of the fact that it flies so slowly it takes a long time to hit the other wall. When we took these outdoors, we found that they got knocked around by the wind and uh, if you try to launch them fast, they tended to bend in flight and roll and wobble in the sky and do other things that basically wasted energy which meant they didn't go as high as they could otherwise have gone. So when they did slow down, they weren't really all that high up. Now, we come to a point in time where you can either decide to leave that extra, leave that long piece of paper there or cut it. And I'm of the school of thought that says if you're trying to get an aeroplane to fly fast, you give it the smallest possible wing you can. So I cut it. Right? I want the high airspeed for the penetration so it can cope with the wind. Therefore, I reduced the wing surface area. However, that means that the weight of all this paper is now going to make the aeroplane nose heavy. Now, a little tiny bit of nose heaviness in an aeroplane is a good thing. It means that in a real aeroplane, if the pilot pays too much attention to the stewardess's kneecaps, the aeroplane is likely to nose down and pick up speed rather than lift its nose and lose speed and stop flying and fall out of the sky. However, with this particular aircraft, having a shorter tail as it's got, it's going to be particularly nose heavy and it's going to need somebody pulling back on the joystick to lift the nose up towards the horizon. And we've got no pilot in a paper aeroplane, so you have to build that control movement into the aircraft. If you fly that, it will dive into the ground. I'm not going to do it to show you. You're just going to have to believe me. However, with the thumbnails, you can make a very neat little tear at the back of the wing. You can do it again. Exactly the same size on the other wing. And then I'm in favour of putting that fold line in place properly and then bending it back down. It, it just gives you a neater look. Some people try to make it an, a, a gentle curve, but I like to have a hard line on the hinge. And, and there we have, in fact I need slightly deeper on that side. You've got to be bilaterally symmetrical. If you're not bilaterally symmetrical, one wing's going to lift more, one wing's going to drag more, and the aeroplane won't fly straight. So there we have a little white high school kids special enhanced evolved version of what we thought was the perfect paper aeroplane in 1973. However, one day, a bloke called uh, Joe wandered over from football practice where he was training with the first 15 football team because he was in year 12 and we were in year 7. And Joe said, look, give me one of your planes and I'll pull it to pieces and refold it for you. And uh, I'm going to show you what he showed us, only I'm going to use a clean sheet of paper. Now, funny thing about Joe, 
is that he was a Papua New Guinea Highlander. And his grandfather had actually seen the Leakey brothers in the 1930s when they were making their very first explorations of the Highlands looking for gold. And I assume Joe must have talked to um, the pilot of a bush plane in New Guinea because he very quickly refolded one of our water bomb gliders into what he described as a paper aeroplane. I call it the world's best paper aeroplane and I call it also a Delta Dart. Now, whereas with the water bomb glider cutting the tail off was a uh, optional, with this thing if you want it to look right, bear in mind if an aeroplane looks right it generally is right and if it is right it'll fly right. Oh dear. Nearly wrecked it. I was almost going to have one wingtip a half a millimetre longer than the other. So we have to trim. And I would say that is actually a flaw. I'll take off with a knife. Now at this point we were fairly mystified. What's he going to do with that? How's that going to work? And what old mate did was he used his fingernail to cut a little 90 degree tag out of there and then he folded that triangular point over the two tags by which stage we were completely mystified. Not many of us had paid very much attention. Now I've made a bit of a botch of that because we've got two wings of slightly different lengths. I must have gone wrong with my original fold. I can perhaps squeeze it and push it and try and get them right but it'll never quite fly right. <clears throat> should drink less beer before doing origami aerophysics. One should pay more attention and get it right earlier in the day. However, the design's pretty robust. And this means that when this aircraft is at high speed, the wings lift and they close the central fuselage fold. When they close that central fuselage fold, What you've got is a trefoil, all right? Uh, that means you got very low drag. At high air speeds, the wings close the fuselage. At low air speeds, the stiffness of the paper opens the fuselage. So what this Highland New Guinea tribesman taught us was a variable geometry paper aircraft monocoque and there's a bloke called uh, Dave Radio Control Special Powers or Dave RC Special Powers he makes radio control planes out of uh, foam styrene and he's going to be really interested in this wing profile it's pretty much exactly what he spent the last 10 years or so learning to do in styrofoam. So that's the construction of the Delta Dart versus the water bomb glider. And whereas this is 3 or 4 to 1 glide ratio, lift drag ratio, this is 6 to 8 ratio, 6 to 8 to 1 glide ratio, lift drag ratio. It kind of depends on the thickness of the paper and how well you build it. Um, I just see I made a tiny error there. It's got to have a slight reflex on the trailing edge. So there we have construction of the water bomb glider and the standard Delta Dart.